Hi friends, this is Audi One, and you're watching part 17 of the Sequely Lab series. In today's lesson, we're going to discuss a different kind of sequel injection, a second order injection. Well, some of you might not be familiar with uh, second order injections because the injections that we have done so far are first order injections giving some background on the second order injections or how do we classify the sequel injections. The first order injections are those kind of injections where when we inject something, the response is instantly obtained. But the second order injections are something similar to a cross-site scripting, a stored cross-site scripting where we dump something in the database and then we expect that information to be used somewhere else on some other page and the injection is performed. Uh, these kind of injections are very difficult to find out when you are doing a pen test, especially with the point and click tools and it requires a code review in order to understand and in order to see how this injection works. So I thought of maybe I'll put this in the lab series and give a brief idea on how these work. So for this, I have updated lesson 24 and uh, posted on the GitHub. So you can just download the new zip or you can just do a new pull request and merge this lesson. Our backend database remains the same. If we see, let's say select star from users. I have just refreshed the database so that it populates the default entries that we have, eight entries. So we have a username and password field. So let's try to gain some information about this lesson. So it says, please log in to continue. And we have a forgot page and we have a new user sign up page. Let's try to sign up as a new user. Let's call it something and let's call the password PASSW0RD for now. PASSW0RD password, sorry, not 0RD. Okay, so if we mistype the passwords, we are getting an error message. Fine. Let's redo it again. So user successfully created and it's redirecting you back. Now let's log in with and let's check the backend first whether the new user is created or not. Okay, so we have a new user created and with the password, let's log in. So it says, welcome dump, you are logged in as the username and you can change your password here. So imagine this as a kind of a password reset page or something. Well, discussing the second order injections or trying to explain the second order injections, I thought what could be the example that I could use. So I came up with a very simplistic idea of changing, let's say, another user's password. For example, administrator is the default uh, admin on this site. Let's take this as an example. So a SQL injection, we inject something in the database. It does not respond with any output, but what we inject stores in the database. And then that input that we have done is being used on the website, on some other page, and the injection happens. Sounds confusing, or maybe I'm not able to explain that in the words. So let's try to follow an example. Let's log out from here. So we see that 
we have a basic website. Let's also test the password reset page. Login as the user. And let's put the current password. And let's put the new password. Let me call it 1234. 1234. And let's say reset. The password successfully updated. Okay. Let's check the database at the back end. Did it do that? Okay. So we see that our password has been updated. Let's log out. If you want, you can try to do injections on these form fields. But I'm assuming that these form fields are not injectable. So they are properly escaping any kind of malicious input that we are putting in. But for your sake, you can try doing that. So let's create a new user. And rather than calling it admin, because admin user already exists, let's see the behavior of application. And let's call it 1234. And the password is 1234. It says the username already exists. Please choose a different username. Okay. So once there is a user with a specific username, we cannot duplicate it as per the behavior of the application. So let's try to inject something and let's put the password as 1234 for now. 1234. The user successfully created and redirecting back to the main page. Let's check the backend database. And you see that our injection that we did did not work as intended. But because of the escape sequence present in the application, whatever we injected is being interpreted as just string. So it creates a user admin apostrophe hyphen hyphen. Let's log in as admin apostrophe hyphen hyphen. And our password is 1234. And log in. So we are logged in as admin apostrophe hyphen hyphen. Now check the magic. 1234 and let's change the password to ASDF. 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 And just have a quick view of the database. We have an admin user and we have an admin apostrophe hyphen hyphen. When I reset this, password successfully updated. And when I come back and check the database, we see that the admin apostrophe hyphen hyphen, the password did not change. So what actually changed? Actually, the password of the admin user changed. Now, how did this happen? Let's try to build this up. So for an update, let's see what could be the basic query that is being used. So we say select, not select, but we'll use an update query because our injection happened on the update query. We did not do anything special, but the application logic, there was a flaw there, which helped us pawn the admin account without doing anything. Let's use an update query, update users set password, password is a field equals, let's take this, this is a new password, 
or let's take a variable to explain let's call it uh, new underscore pass where username equals user and password equals let's call it old password so this is our query if we try to emulate at the back end a basic update query let's copy it and try to put the values in now if you see in the application it's just checking for the current password a new password and then retyping the new password so I'm assuming that when it's updating the password the application is taking the reference of the logged in user from somewhere from the database itself so from the database we have admin apostrophe hyphen hyphen so let's replace it here admin apostrophe hyphen hyphen so effectively discarding the rest of the query it becomes update users set password to new password where username becomes the original user apostrophe comes into picture hyphen hyphen some of you might be saying wow but why this problem is there well the problem is related to that the developer of the application is treating the input that he is receiving from the database as trusted so he is trying to do all kind of validations and all kind of checks on the input that he is receiving from an end user from the applications input fields but he failed to check that he should also try to encode or try to escape anything that he retrieves from the database so he is just trusting that his initial controls that he placed he escaped the mysql injection things by using the mysql escape string so he believes that whatever he is being put to the database is good for that part of the application it was good because there is no sql injection on the any input fields but once the data is there in the database the developer is trusting that data and not performing any other actions on it so he is just ret retrieving the data from the database and building up in the query thereby the injection happening at that point of time i hope it would be a bit clear to give some idea let's see this let's check the source code so it says if the user submits then take the username of the logged in user that is from the session and then use mysql escape string on the inputs that the user is doing so he does on the current password on the new password and on the retype password and then he is using he is comparing if the if the password the new password and the retype password is equal then just do update users and set password equals to the new password 
where username is the username and password is the current password so effectively causing a second order sql injection thereby for developers it is always advisable that always check all the input fields that's a good practice but also escape or encode anything that you receive back from the database just using that information directly to build up a query can be dangerous i hope you like this one please leave your valuable feedback on the feedback section thank you very much bye for now